Hi everyone, in the studio today we're going to paint hydrangeas. Now these start out very intuitive for me. I usually, that's a usually how I paint and so I had no idea what I was actually going to be creating and they resemble hydrangeas. So we're going to go with that. We're going to be painting hydrangeas. These are super easy. This is beginner level, very easy to create. If you do not have the white watercolor that I'm using, you can use gouache. So let's get started. Okay, so I have my Hanamula paper out. It's a nine by 12, it's cold press, and it's 100% cotton. When we work loose with a lot of water, we definitely wanna be using 100% cotton uh, paper because the water absorbs into the paper and the pigments and all that don't float on the top. Um, when you're using tremendous amounts of water uh, to work as loose as I work, um, you gotta have the right thing. now. Because I've been painting a long time and you can probably put any kind of paper in front of me and I can paint on it. Um, but that's something that you learn over time. But as a new student, I really find it, it's, it's almost a disservice to yourself to pick a paper that's almost inferior, that's going to slow your process down. It's going to create issues for you as you're painting. Um, it's not gonna handle the way it needs to handle for you. So uh, I tell the people that um, are just starting out, don't buy the cheap stuff. Get yourself some decent paper. That pack of paper was like $18. So it's affordable, you can do it. And you don't have to do these big sheets of paper until you're ready. And then by that time, you'll be able to probably have sold a few things and can afford to reinvest into your art. So right now, um, I'm making some squiggle marks. You don't have to do this. It's just something I'm having fun doing. I also like to make these like spider webs, cobwebs. I like to just like sew the leaves together. I kind of call it. Um, it, it. It's just something I like to do for whatever reason. I love dragging my paintbrush through what I've painted. It's weird, but I don't know why I have to do it, but I do it, okay? It's just part of me as an artist. Um, and as we all figure out what is that one thing that you can't stop doing, just keep doing it then and keep building off of it because then your art becomes recognizable by other people. And that's what we're shooting for. We want to be our own artist and we want to be different from the others out there, right? So always look for something that makes you unique. Maybe it's a certain kind of product that you use. And another thing that I love that is not really traditional here with watercolor, I know um, white watercolor is kind of fr frowned upon in the watercolor societies in, um, and it's, it, it's because it's more opaque and, um, watercolor has a very translucency to it. And by throwing a little bit of opaque in there, it kind of, um, hides some of that translucency, but I actually like the effects that it can create. Um, so for my aesthetic, I like to use this Dr. Peach Martin Bleed Proof White. You see it there. If you can't get your hands on it, you can make your own batch. You can buy yourself some titanium um, white watercolor or gouache. Put it in a little container like that. Put a little water in it. Mix it up real well. And voila, okay? You don't have to actually have this product. You can make your own. But look at the cool effects that it's making right now. It mingles with the other colors. But here's the key. When you're putting down all those pigments, you've got to put down enough pigment, okay? If you're working with pan paint, which is very hard to create, consistencies that are heavy or like creamy consistencies. It's almost nearly impossible, but that's what's so important with what I'm doing here is that you have to be able to create those heavier consistencies. Sorry, uh, Skitty's in a very meowy mood. Well, she meows all the time, but she's really in a mood today. I don't know what it is, 
but she's meowing. There's something outside that's got her interest or something. I'm not sure. So you might hear some meowing in the background. That's just skitty. We'll try to ignore her. Um, but uh, right now I'm just going to throw in a little bit of highlights. Oh, and that little yellow tool, you're probably wondering what was that? It's just a mini sponge applicator. I got it with some spray ink, I think from Ranger. They sent a little gift in the pack and, um, but you can find them in Amazon. I do have a link for them. They're really inexpensive. It actually worked out really nice. You'll see that play out a little bit more um, in the next video where I really get into using that sponge applicator. And I'm going to really loosen things up with a lot more water. This one doesn't have as much water. As you can see, I didn't bump any edges with this one, okay? The next one, we're gonna bump edges. If you don't know what bumping edges is, it's probably because it's just some silly thing that I came up with to say that you hit those edges of that pigment and you pull you pull outward and the pigment follows your wet brush. And it's, it's just like bumping that edge of that pigment is what I call bumping edges. And I do have a whole video on it if you wanna, you know, wanna follow along a little bit more with my whole thing on bumping edges. There is a video on that on my channel page, so check that out. So now I just have a uh, palette knife, and I'm just gonna go into this wet, heavy pigment, and I'm just gonna etch in some lines, okay? I'm very loose with it. I'm not trying to be perfect and precise. I want everything to have a very loose aesthetic to it, because the minute you're really loose and then you do something tight when you're painting this way, it looks off. It So if you're gonna use a loose aesthetic, go loose all the way, okay? Try not to tighten up somewhere. It's really tough. Now we're gonna throw, now we're gonna start a new one, okay? Um, just filling up my brush again, green appetite, no, undersea green, olive green, and then that espresso, uh, uh, espresso, ground espresso by Ranger. And again, I'm putting down the same, there's that little applicator tip. It's got a little spongy tip to it. And I'm gonna put those little tender, uh, little spikes that you see on stems of flowers. Sometimes you can barely see them. Um, but, and now I'm just gonna really pull that all over. Instead of using that liner brush like I used last time, I'm gonna do it with these this fine applicator. And it's kind of cool. So. I really, really like those little applicator tips. I think I'm gonna um, buy myself a bigger pack of them and kind of ex kind of expand a little bit and play with them and see what happens. Um, because sometimes when we find new tools like that, it spurs on new ideas. Now, this one is really dreamy at the top. It's a really soft blue, but then in the middle, I really start throwing in some heavy Indothrone blue. Love Indothrone blue. And it's probably one of my favorite blues. Okay. So if I had to have a paint line, oh, wouldn't that be beautiful? If I had my own paint line, Indothrone blue would definitely be one of the colors that I would choose. Olive green is another one that I have always loved. Um, so, and I, I have my other ones. I have um, violets that I like. So there's a lot of things that, that I like using. Um, but if you put enough of that pigment down, like I've just done, um, it blends with this opaque white, okay? Now also watch my brush work and how I'm kind of, when I'm at the top, I'm kind of making these these buds go towards the sky, okay? And then they found, fall downward because if you look at a hydrangea, the flowers are kind of billowy also. So don't make a flat, don't make a flat straight bottom. Make sure the bottom is also billowy. Don't make round balls, okay? You want it to be more of round in shape with kind of a straight bottom, but don't make it straight, straight, okay? Um, and then I went in there and I loosened things up and I bumped edges and then I had that squirrel brush that had a lot of water in it and I sh just shook some dirty water all over and it put a lot of water 
onto that flower. So I had to quickly mop it up with some one ply toilet paper. Now I'm just going in, putting some highlights in, just adding just a little bit of accent here and there. Um, you'll have to assess when you're working and just be careful not to overdo it because it could get a little murky looking, especially with those colors that I'm using. So, and this is just a little olive green that I'm throwing in there. It gives it a little bit springier green color. And then when I bump that edge and release that pigment, it's kind of really letting the viewer say, okay, this is a really pretty green color. And, um, but those leaves are still saturated in green. So it gives a kind of an atmosphere around the flower, which I really like. Okay, so now this time we're gonna basically do the same thing. We're basically just throw some leaves down. I'm doing some quick swipes. I'm not being real, what do I wanna say? Like some people when they paint, they you know they they create leaves a certain way and that's how we learn but i've always been a very loose in my approach from the very beginning and i've never got really tied into um how to use the brush in certain ways where you push down and lift and turn and, and all that stuff i don't get into all that way because then it kind of gives it more of uh, what a commercial kind of look to it. I, I, I illustrated kind of look to it. I'm not sure what the right word is to it, but I, my aesthetic, I just want to be really loose. So I don't pay attention to all that. I just do what feels right to me and how the brush needs to operate in my mindset. Okay. Now I'm just grabbing some pink here. I'm not even sure. Like I said, look at that hot mess there. I don't even know what's there. Use, make orange ones, make you know, make a light green one would be pretty too. To use whatever colors you want to do this and just have fun. Now this, there is a lot of pigment on this one compared to a couple of the other ones. I'm really putting a lot in here, but, um, uh, I, but I am putting that center. I am putting that brown in there. So I've done that in the last two. On this one, I'm doing it again. It helps put that shadow in the inside of the flower that we need. And when you're putting that white watercolor down, um, it's we don't want to close in all that either. Okay, and make sure you use a small brush. This is a size eight. Okay, so I go scale way down, not to dinky dinky, size eight, nothing smaller, and just lightly, okay, lightly dance around with your brush. Now, as you can see, I keep cleaning my brush. I go in, get clean, clean white, because if you keep doing that, then you're not gonna have just a big blob of soft pink okay you're gonna have variations that you see in mine you're gonna see browns light pinks you're gonna see dark pink and you're gonna see white you want to see all of that that's what's going to give it some really cool interest and dance with your with your brush work as light as a feather do not press down do not use a big heavy quill um, use a smaller brush when you do this for these hydrangeas, okay? So, and now for the last one that we're going to do here, again, uh, that was a nice leaf. I like that leaf. See, it's just what I'm, I'm using a liner brush to do that, you guys. That thin floppy liner brush, I use the side of the brush. So look at your brushes in a different way. Play with them differently. If you're painting loose, go loose. Okay, there's no need that you have to have specific brushes for certain things. Some of these, you would not expect to make a leaf with a liner brush, right? And a palette knife, you can use a palette knife to do things. So use your tools in different ways. Um, you'll be surprised what you come up with. And you might have aha moments and something looks right that other people can't figure out how did she do that, okay? That's what you want. You want to stand out from the other people, okay? 
So this is just a bunch of heavy purple going down. I do have a light one that's going in here. So I have two purples going in. They're putting a little light at the top and at the bottom, but in the center, I'm not putting any brown into the center of this one because it's already dark. It doesn't need it. So now I'm going to just go in and um, dance around with my brush again. Make sure that your little petals are not all going in one direction. Kind of move your brush you know, to the shape of the flower. Like you're holding and you're touching and holding and petting the petals. That's how you paint, okay? If that makes sense. Um, don't manhandle it. Don't smash your brush into it that you have big blobs. Well, I don't want to see big blobs, you guys. The ones that are in my group, no big blobs. Um, I want to see delicate, um, soft, brush work, but you have to work quick when you do this, okay? You, you, otherwise, the stuff is drying too. It's drying, it's not going to work. So you have to move fast. These are fast paintings. Give yourself 10 minutes to do this painting, okay? No, n nothing more. H how many minutes has this been? And I've, I've done four of these. Okay, the last three, I did speed up the film because otherwise we'd be here all day. But still, I... I spent no more than what 10 minutes on each so you guys i hope you enjoyed this if you did please subscribe like and comment until next time bye for now